It's Friday at last, and this is The Week That Was. I'm Simon Brown, my co-host is Juliette Tilevia, and joining us for our usual pre-weekend wine is Vestax Brat Kamala. Brat, no whining today because, like, everything is green. The local markets, offshore markets, Rand is 1840, gold is up, even PGMs are up. Green top. And, and a tie. Yeah, no, I, well, I'm wearing a green top. And I, and I said to um, Julieta, you know, everything is up 3.5% on average. So it's like, which index? I'm like, choose your index. Everything. <laughs> everything. Even China's. <laughs> Even China is up a lot. So okay. So yeah. why? Any ideas as to this? No, no, no. So, exuberance. so the, it's not really exuberant at this point. But mm -hmm. um, in, in in the US, I think the I think what was the average um, earnings being up by? It was expected to be about four point eight percent per per company. That's over five hundred companies or two thousand companies. Mm -hmm. if you want to include um, all the Mickey Mouse's in the background there um, and. We're up about 5.4% on average on earnings alone. So that's pretty impressive. It's a, you know, with over 90% of the big companies all reported, having it reported um, their numbers, that's a good showing for, uh, you know, an earnings quarter. So, yes, it doesn't mean you wouldn't have Roblox, for example, yesterday down 22%, or <laughs> other companies, you know, chandering on the spot, but Uber. it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, Uber didn't. It was a small change. Yeah, it's it an accounting small. technicality. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've also had the, I mean, but there has been some confusion in my mind about the dollar because uh, there's been a lot of talk about dollar strength. And then all of a sudden we're seeing a little dollar bit weakness. of weakness. Uh, Correct. Which, of course, has helped us. Well, a little bit of dollar weakness means companies are strengthening. It means maybe there will be that cut you know, one cut at least. That's what, you know, the futures market is indicating at the end of the year. So, yeah, you can't have a, a strengthening, you know, um, economy and a strengthening currency. You know, it doesn't make sense. And cutting rates. And, all. and cutting rates. Something in, there in the has to give. So, you know, it has to be a balancing act. And that's what we're seeing from these earnings. And, you know, the economy is strong. Um, earnings are proving so. Um, so, I don't know, the... the, the, the Capital has to flow, you know, where it's wanted, not where uh, we think it should flow. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, well, it is flowing, and it is uh, flowing into my board, not into my portfolio, but but into markets <coughs> in general, is which is good go to see. Higher, which is nice to have. Mm. Yeah. Also making news this week, Shell has left the forecourt. Parliament is rising from the ashes with a monstrous price tag. And Jacob Zuma's MK gig is about as chaotic as you'd expect. Amazon is here and it's fast. North Korea wants to join the BRICS, heaven help us. TikTok's <laughs> not taking its ban lying down. And independent US presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. says a worm ate part of his brain, which would explain an awful lot. Balula can't resist a shiny black G-Wagon. Our prayers go to the people of George and Apple is taking some well-deserved flack for crushing what's left of our human creativity. But first, metaphor is clearly a problem for South Africans who can happily sing songs that call for minorities to be killed but lose their minds over a figurative flag burn. Our eyes have rolled so far back we can now see behind us like the specimen here. With regards to the burning of the flag, even in a political advert, uh, that is treasonous. The flag, the pre flag of our country, is a sacred, sacred article in the life of our country. It is that flag that unites all of us. It is despicable that a political party can, as it seeks to express itself, go and burn the symbol of our unity, the symbol of our existence as a nation. And I think it is treasonous. Except for the part where it's not treasonous, we have laws, and burning the flag is not illegal. And also, it's a um, metaphor, for goodness sakes, and the person doing the burning it of did, the flag. It did, no one actually burned the flag, but I'm not going to defend the, the flag burning. All I'm going to say that is maybe our president is on the spectrum, you know? <laughs> I, 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 really, I really, yeah, I know, I really don't understand, you know, like, corruption is not treasonous, but someone speaking of burning a flag is treasonous. Mm. And, I mean, I, oh, it's very really convenient. I, I, oh, yeah, I, no, I, everything that works for him and his rally, yeah, for sure, let's good. go, thumbs up. But everything else is like, we just look away, don't do anything about that, yeah. and don't be a president. I think it was earlier this week or towards, you know, t the tail end of last week where he tweeted uh, something along the lines of, you know, the ANC has done X, Y, Z for 
this country in 30 years, blah, blah, blah. And people were very quick to point out that actually he hasn't done absolutely nothing for the people or the ANC. He's just, you know, um, praising and clapping for all the other presidents that came before him that did something for well, the he's been stuffing his couch. I mean, let's be clear, he's been busy. That's exactly what he's been doing, which is not for the people. Yeah. For and himself, and then, for sure. I mean, SABC bandit, which should be tre treasonous. But it's also, folks don't understand, at this point in the election, you're not trying to win over new voters. When you're the DA, you're trying to get your voters to the poll. I've never voted for the DA, probably won't, but I don't care, they can make their, their come on, man, it's politics. Yeah, yeah, and they can shoot themselves in the foot if they want to. I mean, if you are thinking of voting for the DA, and now they've got this flag stuff going up, well, and that's the, you know, the line you're not willing to cross, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, then... Yeah, yeah come. Then the you've got vote, an alternative. Vote, yeah, vote for yeah. other parties. That's what, you know, democracy is about. That's what politics is about, I guess. I suppose the, the point is that, um, <coughs> is it an election strategy for the DA that's going to backfire on them? And, and that is the question. I wouldn't say not necessarily. I mean, I have so many examples where the DA should have gone under, but they didn't. But it's also, I mean, say what you will about the DA. There's no way that some little social media manager in a dark back office did this. This would have gone through the process. They would have done testing. Importantly, at this point in the election, you're not trying to get voters to come to you. You're trying to get your voters to this go reminds on me the of 29th. Yeah. They've tested this. You, they're you, not stupid. Yeah, you said... They're not like them, but they're not stupid. You said these exact same words when we were, when we were talking about the CR17 <laughs> on this show, that the strategy, even though it didn't work or it did work or whatever, I can't remember the, 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 the context back then, but it went through a rigorous process yeah. with individuals that sat in a room, you know, round table like this yeah, and, you do and spoke about this and you do, you know, penetration testing, pen testing as they yeah. call it. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, uh, and then of course, it's Twitter, man. It's, it got, it, Twitter is an ugly place. Meanwhile, the ANC has invited ZANU PF, given their vast ex expertise in rigging elections, to oversee our own. Jacob Zuma may or may not be the face of MK and Fakil and Bulula, pretty much sums the, the us and them status of ANC's G Wagon Easy Riders and the serfs to whom they throw a few shirts. I don't know if you've seen that footage. I am not easily offended. That throwing the t shirts out just looked like it looked like classic. You know those horrible videos you get of, of Europeans driving through rural Africa and tossing sweets out of the, oh out yeah. of the car window, except this was <laughs> a minister doing it in Nanda, tossing out tea. So what I'm getting from you is distasteful. Yes. Distasteful, and I, th I think Judith and February... disrespectful. Disrespectful. Judith February used the word tawdry, and which yeah. is a, it's, a, it's an excellent At word to sum up the ANC. A, a three million rand car, that is on loan from someone who is a corruption accused in the whole Fort Hare kickback scandal. It, it's just, it's filthy. Uh, and that really epitomizes the ANC. And these are the dumbos that the old people keep voting for. <laughs> they don't respect you. They throw t-shirts out the Dude, window. Someone's Google is going to come and get you. <laughs> Careful there. No, no, but Ang, Ang Basabi, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> this is madness. But this is, it's also... An these uh, people don't care about your dignity, respect. None of, they don't have values. Why am I even naming values here? Like, yeah. we're talking about humans. We're talking about bots here. Yeah, but, but bots it, that are just so addicted but it, but to it, corruption. It so works, and there's going to be a huge freak out come the 30th when votes start coming in. Because say what you will about the ANC, man, they have got a voting machine. And if you look at the polls, they're all edging higher for the ANC. Because they know, they know, they know what buttons to press. They know where yeah. to go. They know which go go to convince. You know, unlike you know us here who, who can't even you know take your little sister with you to go vote. This in this election, that's exactly what you should be doing. Yeah. Those who say they don't want to vote, no, just wake up, carry them, bring their IDs. You have to vote for someone. Yeah. It, it, it's absolutely insane to think you don't want to vote in these elections. Mm. So please go out there and vote. Yeah. <laughs> Bright, consistent messaging. <laughs> then there's the brouhaha over Shell South Africa's exit, which is leaving its downstream fuels business after 120 years. Are we staring a return to horses and donkey carts in the face? What do you make of this? Uh, is it just uh, is it a commentary on the state of doing business in South Africa? Is it a commentary on a declining industry? How how do you view? It's uh, it's probably uh, an, um, an amalgamation of events. You know, I never wanted to use that word on TV, but here I am. Uh, it's a combination of things that are happening in the background, but the most importantly, 
what you have to think about these global businesses that are leaving South Africa is that it doesn't make a difference in their bottom line. It doesn't. Okay, so I used to work for, uh, you know, a, a conglomerate. You know, it's a, a company that's in each and every country except North Korea. Okay. Mm -hmm. This country, we were not even in the profit numbers. You're in a rounding area. Yeah, in the revenue that. numbers, we were 4% of the whole group. If you know, I mean, profits were like not point not 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 eight yeah. percent. Okay, and this was at their height. I can't imagine now with FMCG where it is today. It's it's not even in the picture. So even if they fired, I don't know, eight ten thousand people that work for the company, it would make no difference for them. Yeah, no, and it is, and they just, I mean, Shell's looking at the GC. I'm returns. not talking um, for Shell here. Yeah, I'm no, no, sure, this is I don't care for Shell. But but they're just looking at the GC returns you get from extraction, and the forecourt is a regulated environment, which is no fun. I mean, they're closing down all over. But it does provide an opportunity for great South African yes. operators yes. who can run those assets and sweat yeah. them at 80% to actually provide more jobs in South Africa and maybe expand if mm -hmm. the, the opportunity is there. But this is where... South Africans, we fail a lot. Someone says, I want to, you know, close a plant. You have, you know, we've got skilled engineers, we've got capital, we've got individuals, but they rather take the capital offshore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That yeah. tells you about the red tape in this country. So true on that. Further afield in Israel's staunchest allies are starting to get more than a little edgy. If they go into Rafa, they haven't gone into Rafa yet. If they go into Rafa, I'm not supplying the weapons that have been used historically to deal with Rafa, to deal with the cities, to deal with that problem. New selection coming up, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> so suddenly he won't give the, it's not guns, it's, it's bombs and stuff. And he's like, oh no, suddenly he finds the backbone. It's, I'm still at the beginning of this. So, you know, individuals get abducted at a, you know, you know, by, um, a militant group, yeah, mm -hmm. militant group or terrorist organization. There's so many international bodies that have worked on negotiations with many of people getting abducted across the planet without causing any bombing to anyone. This is definitely has to be, you know, motivated by something else. I'm sorry because they could have worked with the West, the whole of the West, the MI16, the, um, you know, the NSA. The, there's so many different bodies that could have worked with to release those people, to try to release those, to negotiate, to, but they chose the rockets. Mm. So yep. now they have to stick to it. Yeah. And it's sad. And America is like, I've had enough of this. I don't want to play with you anymore. Mm. Mm. And very quickly before the break, Amazon is here. It's amazing. It's exceptional. We own shares in Amazon, so please do yourself a favor. Buy as oh, much the only things thing as you can on Amazon. They will arrive the following day, not in three days. And there's an option for same day delivery. Yeah, but I buy. And if you in drawback, it works. I buy good old the old razor braids, right? The safety razors. Yeah, yeah. I buy them in Amazon. It's about 150 bucks for 400 of them. Lasts me three years. Shipping's 500. What's the one thing that I stock? Safety blades. I'm boycotting. No, no, it's it, speak it, to your, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm not talking. No, not bosses at Amazon. <laughs> it, it's still brand new. They're still looking for suppliers locally, so they're still going through the vetting process. No, so this is oddly enough, this is made in Saint Petersburg, Russia. So hold. <laughs> uh, maybe bad for take a lot, but very good for. The uh, no. for, for the whole, um, so the distribution the, the, market, the, the, and, and this is an opportunity for companies to get into the, so you know, the so last you, mile yeah, distribution. Yeah. So you thinking about the supply chain, right? It's amazing for that because now there's more work to do, but it's amazing for consumers because you can, f you know, I'll, I'll make a simple example. So um, I'm a cyclist and I was looking for, you know, new, um, new clip on, um, you know, uh, pedals or clipless pedals as they call them. Crank Brothers make really nice ones. If I go to my local dealer, he's charging me 2.4 for them. On Amazon, they're 799. Mm. Mm. And with Take A Lot's already done a... Well, Take A Lot is colluding with my local dealer because they're still okay. the same, 2.4. Okay, well that's where we leave it. After the break, the weekend company, stay with us.